This game, I should say this franchise, has consistently had just amazing fucking soundtracks. Holy shit. Oh, I know who that is. Awesome, so this is this scene. Do you swear to uphold the principles of our order? And all that for which we stand? I do. And never to share our secrets, nor divulge the true nature of our work? I do. And to do so from now until death, whatever the cost? I do. Then we welcome you into our fold, brother. Nice. You are now a Templar, harbinger of a new world. May the Father of Understanding guide us. May, May the, the Father, Father of, of Understanding, understanding guide, guide us. us. Well, that's fucking crazy. Connor Kenway kills, uh, I think three, if not four of the pe six people in that, in that room. Just a weird thought I had while watching that. Do you understand now? I'm starting to see why you're so interested in Shea Cormac. Uh, I'm not. Shay has seen the true face of the world. And he has chosen his path accordingly. A similar choice will soon present itself to you. This dude is a straight up fucking bad guy. He literally looks like he's wearing Shay's coat. I did not think you'd get this far. <laughs> but you seem to be on the right track. We still can't access the servers in the basement, but there's another one located at the top of the building near Melanie's office. That's your next stop. Are we supposed to like her? I don't... I don't understand if we're supposed to like her. She calls us a fucking numbskull. I'm not a fan of it. Like, at all. Oh, well, now they have different people here. I was beginning to wonder when we were... Gonna come back to fucking Abstergo. Alright, we're going back up to Olivier's office. Dude, Olivier, just watch dogs. Just that instant connection. Could you stop by my office? We need to have a talk. Ooh. What's up, eh? Like, you worried about some Templars? Are you an assassin person yourself and uh, you just, you're worried about some Templars, Melanie? Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and talk to her. What's up, boo? Aw, oh, she has a picture of him. This office used to belong to a man named Olivier Garneau. Yeah, I remember. He was my predecessor as chief creative officer of Abstergo Entertainment. Yeah, I, I was there. Otto Berg is a representative from our parent company, Abstergo Industries. He's showing you the true history of the world, just like they showed me. Otto's probably he Warren Vidic's He was intelligent right and man. passionate about our work. But a year ago, he caught a glimpse of this truth. They never found his body. Dude. This is not the way we normally bring people up to speed on these matters, but you've worked hard and are proving yourself, so... I'm granting you level two security access. The servers on this floor should unlock more of Shay's memories. For real? That's so fucking dope, dude. So now we're gonna be able to... do something differently, question mark? I have no idea. Let's see if we can find some collectees first. Well, that's the sort of all say you're like straight up. I did not realize that. I'm going for that as Shay Corman. Come on, you've come a long way, but you're not done yet. Get to the servers. I'm so I'm, I'm sorry, Melanie. God, sorry, sorry. Ooh. Holy shit. It's winter time. So months have passed. Got fucking Melanie yelling at me. I got fucking Violet yelling at me. Like, I got everybody just talking at me and not to me. And they never found Olivier's body. There's so much fucking info dumping at one time. It's just crazy, dude. You're natural at restoring these servers now. So, no more excuses. So, that one's level three. Oh, did they close that shit off? They did, dude. They closed that shit off over there, man. That's not cool. Alright, well let's get to picking up this thing right quick and then we'll get to the fucking hacking. 
I really need to play Watch Dogs. For my channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice long weekend I've had, dude. Um, num, 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 num. All right, I'm gonna guess this one. I'm gonna make this one go to the bottom, and then this one is gonna go all the way up top like this. Ta-da! No reflection needed at all. I wanted to see if it was possible, and it probably is, but just got to be straight and transparent with it. Francois Macandal saved Baptiste from sleep. I've got your animus ready and waiting. Um, do we get to get more memories or no? Like that, those are just the so okay. So Melanie was just talking some shit, which is fine. So now this computer can be restored, and uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm finna do it. Wow. Bam. Those are weird. I don't really have a strategy for them. You kind of just gotta. The first civilization entity known look at as it. Juno reemerged from the Grand Temple in New York in December 2012. Although no longer a corporeal being, she exists as a kind of digital consciousness somewhere in the Abstergo cloud. To accomplish her goals in the real world, Juno uses two types of people. The first is another precursor consciousness that emerges in a human being at random. This person is commonly known as a sage. Juno also holds sway over a group of disciples called the Instruments of the First Will, who believe it is humanity's natural role to serve the first civilization. Abstergo is currently using the First Will as a cheap and hands-off way of acquiring pieces of Eden and other relics. However, I suspect that the reverse is also true that they are using our resources to locate objects that will help them further their own goals. I do not trust them. But for now, all I can do is have Da Costa monitor their activities. Juno's motives are unclear. Although she has made one attempt to possess a corporeal body, she appears to be more powerful as a digital entity. Agent Da Costa fears that should humanity ever achieve singularity, a fusion of humanity and machines, Juno would become unstoppable. Ironically, it is Abstergo itself which is driving civilization in that direction. A lot of the audio files that you collect in this shit are mad interesting, homie. Super interesting. Uh, they offer a little bit of insight. That gun is sticking up like that, and I'm not comfortable with it. It should be laying down. Smooth move, numbskull. I've got the next set of Shay's memories loaded up and ready to go. We are nearly there. <sighs> know that you are aiding a worthy cause, even if you do not yet know what it is. I'm kind of itching to find out what it is, man. I kind of want to know exactly what it is I'm doing here. Like, I don't... I'm just saying that Violet didn't have to yell at us for not fixing the elevator before she did. Ugh. <laughs> she has her own motives going on there. Alright. Well, now we're going to this fucking room. I see a tablet already. They're talking about the way that Connor died. He is, he is like the most shrouded in mystery character that we've played yet man we know nothing about him and people were just like i don't really fucking care i care dude talking about yeah he gets married he has a wife i didn't know that bam i knew exactly what i was doing there I knew exactly what I was doing there. I had like a goal in mind. I was like, all right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this and that, this and that. Given the nature of our current investigation, I have been looking at other assassins who, despite themselves, have helped the Templar cause. 
The first is Clay Kazmarek, who infiltrated Warren Vidic's Animus Project in Rome. He became the project's Subject 16. Kazmarek's rich ancestry helped Vidic to identify the Renaissance assassin Ezio Auditori as a person of interest. Driven mad by overexposure to the Animus, he committed suicide. However, Kazmarek may have unexpectedly become useful again. While in the Animus, Subject 16 came into contact with the first civilization entity known as Juno. Perhaps studying his bizarre Animus experiences can help us find a way to deal with the looming threat Juno promises. With Subject 16 out of the picture, Vidic needed a replacement. Desmond Miles, a runaway assassin, was captured in September 2012 and was used as Animus Subject 17 to further the search for an Apple of Eden. He managed to escape and uncovered an imminent threat to the planet. A solar flare similar to the one that wiped out the precursor race over 75,000 years ago. Desmond Miles also reactivated a first civilization temple in New York and used it to save the world. But it cost him his life. Abstergo recovered his body. In death, Desmond Miles became Sample 17, and his valuable genetic data was uploaded to the cloud servers in order to benefit all branches of Abstergo. Whether they live or die, we must continue to find ways to make the assassins work for us. Fucked up shit. Some crazy shit. Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell. It looks like some kind of... I see Assassin's Creed 2. I see Brotherhood. I don't know what that one is in the on the bottom of it. The guy, I don't know. No idea. Attack this computer. Oh shit. I was not expecting that to be like that. There you fucking go, dude. It is 426 on December 13, 2012. The briefing, the briefing ended at 434. Transcript to be sent to Alan Rickin for security clearance. Fucking A, man. Alan Rickin ended up being Jeremy Irons in the Assassin's Creed movie. I think we discussed that too in Assassin's Creed 1. Crazy fucking dialogue, yo. Still no level 3 clearance though. This looks like something entirely different. This lo it looks like an entirely different room. And uh, it has been months. We obviously established that it's been some months. That's all I can fucking find, dude. I don't see any more drop tablets or computers to hack without level 3 security clearance. So uh, let's get back to the, the good shit of this game. What do you guys say?